What up, players? It's Warboss Tear up in this mud. Tutorial time, y'all. We are painting up this Iron Hands Space Marine for it's a Loyalist Space Marine. So th the things you're gonna need are a can of black primer. That's most important. And then after that, you can just see it's we're picking out details. So for the highlight color on the armor, you'll notice it's kind of bluish. So we use Tekadon Scale Green. We then tie down all the armor with Nuln Oil. That is our shade. We also do all the silver in Lead Belcher. And for the skin, we use a mixture of... Let's see if I've got it. Where, where did they go? Ah, here we go. Mixture of Ricard Flesh. And that is my gray. Celestra Gray. Here it is, yeah. Celestra Gray. For the that's the, so that's the skin, and then for the the wash on the skin, we use Rakeland Flesh Shade, which is that, and yeah, that's that's it. Really simple color scheme for a beginner painter. The Iron Hands are a great chapter, or for a painter that doesn't have much time, Iron Hands are a great chapter to get into. Very cool, very iconic looking. The thing that I really like about them that sets them apart from the Black Templars or the Raven Guard and makes them look cooler to me is that they have silver trim on their shoulder pads and the silver just picks up the light really nicely. So um, I guess to each his own and maybe when I start painting some Black Templars or Raven Guard, I'll totally change my mind. But so far I'm, I'm very happy with the way this is going and hope you guys are too. Enjoy the video. What up, players? It's Wallboss Tap in this mode. So, um, here's the guy that we're gonna use. I was looking at the Iron Hands Marine that I built up, and I realized that a lot of people aren't gonna have the Iron Hands upgrade kit. So, I wanted to build one and paint one in a color scheme that everybody would be able to do with any Marine that they've got lying around. The only difference is that I did give this guy the head, like the little um, Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator head that's half metal. Just thought that was very appropriate. Um, but other than that, it's it's a regular built marine from any current marine kit. What I'm going to be doing is, is priming it with this Krylon matte black. And um, let's see if we can. There we go. Krylon. It's camouflage line. It's a matte black spray, non-reflective nature color, and. Um, We'll start with that when I get back. Woohoo! We're back! We are back after a hiatus of real life work and other such things. We are gonna get started with our 10th Legion Legionnaire. Here is a warrior from the Iron Hands Space Marine chapter. It's a chapter now, it's not a Legion. So, yeah, uh, we, we sprayed sprayed the guy with some matte black primer. Krylon is great. I mean, look, there's no there's no shine, there's no gloss. It goes on nice and smooth and uh, you can really see where all the paint needs to be. It doesn't really glob up as long as you prime away from the model. Hold it at least a couple feet away from you and don't do it in one big, you know, um, spread it out. Then your primer will go on really nice. So the first thing you wanna do is we're gonna take a dab a dab black and we are going to just paint the entire model with it we're gonna go over it once so I like to water it down a little bit and use my wet palette to get a really nice watery black this also works if you have the old chaos black but mostly what this is for is to compensate for any any errors and uh, just in case you missed something so we're just going over all of our black armor. You do not want to get the bolter because one of the things that I saw when I was doing my research for this video was that the guy has, uh, all the iron hands use silver bolters. Interesting. They don't have like a bolter casing. It's a different color. It's like the whole, the whole bolter is silver with some highlights. So that'll be interesting and different to paint. noodles. Alright, so 
while we're letting that dry, we're gonna go on to the skin. Now, in order to paint Iron Warrior's skin, what I wanted to go for was a very dead looking skin, skin that hasn't seen the light of day and has been, you know, kind of just very sickly. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix Celestra Gray with, here we go, Rackarth Flesh. And what this is gonna do is give us a very pallid, pale looking skin color. So I've got my wet palette here. Let's bring that into focus. I was mixing some blood colors earlier and some of it got into the water, so I had to change my palette and uh, I decided to leave the water. That's why the water is a little bit pink, in case you're wondering. I think I'm gonna go two to one. So two parts rack our flesh to one part celestial gray. Otherwise it doesn't have any of that cream tone at all, which is kind of what we want. Yeah, that's that's good. So you have like a very gray, it almost almost matches the old Ogre Kingdom's gray. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay, three to one, three to one, that's our final final offer. Three to one. That's it. So it's it's basically like a very light bone color, gray bone color. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna paint this on our guy's face. Now if your Iron Warrior doesn't have any skin, just obviously skip this section. If you're using a helmet, their helmet color is black, their eye lens is red. So you would do the helmet in the, uh, you just go over the helmet like we went over the rest of. The armor with watered down. A bone, a bone, a bone, a black. Something like this. Hope you all have been well. Yeah, like I said in my Fluff Hunter video, summertime is here and that means no school for me. So I get to devote a lot of my time doing nerdy things like keeping up on my channel. Let's uh, zoom a little bit out so we can, just in case, I, it's really easy for me to get out of focus because of uh, how close I have to get into actually seeing, seeing what I'm painting. And uh, also Igor gets easily distracted when he's working the camera, isn't that right Igor? That's not true, master. I am a consummate professional when it comes to filming. I just, also while I film, I like to look at pictures of cats on the internet. Look at this one, master. It says, hang in there. Yes. Yes, it does. Look, he's hanging off the branch, master. He looks delicious. I'm not sure where this head is from. I found it in my bits box. Like, I don't really see it on any of the new, newer uh, Space Marine kits, but I, I love that it's, you know, Got like a Terminator face. Not Warhammer 40,000 Terminator, I mean, ah, yeah, Terminator. Oh, my paint got a little too watery. I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry. Okay, so while we wait for that to dry, our armor is just, 
just about dry, it should be. We'll let that dry a little bit longer. First thing we're gonna do before then is we're gonna take dry out bark and we're gonna paint any pouches or packs that you may have glued onto your model. Master, why don't you ever take me with you when you go to your real job? Well, Igor, I'm afraid you terrify the children. It is not very nice. I love children. Just like I love cats. I love children. Especially when they are medium rare. Mmm, children. And that is why I do not take you with me to work, Igor. And anyway, while all that is still drying, we're gonna get onto the silver metallic parts. And we're gonna be using lead belcher. So we're gonna start with the bolter, the silver bolter. And also, if you're using the um, Iron Hands Upgrade Pack, then you'll also have lots of bionic bits on your guys that you can use this on to. So any exposed um, silver metallic parts paint over with lead belcher. I'm also going to be painting over the uh, insignia on the chest. So I chose an older looking armor and it has the like metal um, I guess piping you'd call it but if you have some of the newer mark armors that you're painting this onto then the silver double-headed eagle the Aquila that's what you would paint uh, that's what you'd paint silver I'm sorry the Aquila is you would what you would paint silver. I also like to paint my grenades silver, so if you have any frag grenades clipped to your belt, your your marine's belt, then that's what you would paint. One of the things I love about Space Marines is that each one of them, when you read the fluff and all the background, each one of them is, you know, a, a hero. Whatever legion you're in, a, a mighty hero or, you know, a dastardly villain. I'm also going to be painting the uh, exhaust vents in the back here. And so they've each got like a, a story. Unless you're a scout, in which case you're a total noob. Um, each marine has seen possibly, you know, decades of war and fought, you know, almost you could say hundreds of battles. They keep getting deployed all over the, the universe, the galaxy. And so that's something that I like to keep in mind when I'm painting these. And, and it's something that will help, hopefully help you get through the, the mind-numbing, jarring sensation of having to paint, you know, 80 of these guys. Fact that I'm also going to paint the silver into the joints. The fact that these guys have fought together in their clans um, for, yeah, like I said, years, possibly even decades, and they've each got a got a story. You know, they're not human like Imperial Guard. They've all got backgrounds and stories. That's what I love. Like you're commanding these superhuman soldiers that have like history and tradition and all that good stuff. Sometimes you see, uh, I hate to rag on younger players because there are some younger players out there that are fantastic painters that take the time to really highlight shade and and uh, do you know what they can, but 
a lot of younger painters out there just and a lot of new painters who don't really care about the painting side they just want to play and that's a totally acceptable thing to do in the hobby but sometimes you see these armies out there that have you know their, their eye lenses the red of the eye lens has been painted onto you know the nose and it just it's bleeding everywhere the paint looks really thick and sloppy and um, and they just don't want to take the time to do it and that's that's totally up to you just as as someone who loves the painting side of the hobby it's it's always sad for me <laughs> when I see like really sloppy painted armies it, it reminds me of myself when I was first starting out I had those old metal goblin spider riders the really really old ones and um, oy, they, they look really bad okay how we doing so the silver aquila or the silver piping or if you've got one of those that just has like a skull on it anything that you have on the chest of the torso that's what you would paint in silver with lead belcher here and we're going according to games workshops website so we're also hmm. okay so this is this is a personal preference thing the lexicanum shows that the rims the edges of the shoulder pads you leave them black but uh, the Games Workshop website shows that they are silver. And I'm going to do them in silver because the Iron Hands needs something to differentiate their armor from Black Templar, Raven Guard, you know, the other Loyalist chapters out there that have black, predominantly black armor. The Raven Guard uses a lot of whites and reds for their, their, their trimming. And, um,. The Black Templars use a lot of white as well for their trimming, so for your iron hands, I would say this is going to be really helpful for, for you. I love that the primer did the base coat, pretty much. I feel like he's telling me I should get a, um, get a compressor. I actually have an airbrush and a whole bunch of awesome stuff donated from uh, from Badger Studios that I am planning on unboxing and taking a look at later and a great great product great company and uh, if you look at War Game Consortium's channel they've got so much stuff uh, from Ken who is the uh, president and the owner of Badger Company and he's such a knowledgeable guy and he's so kind enough to um, send me some stuff to review and to show all of you. So as soon as I get a compressor and figure out how all of that works, then um, I am definitely going to be making videos about them. I should talk to Chung about possibly doing like a collaboration series. He actually mentioned it a long time ago, like airbrushing for beginners. So I, I'm, I'm going to suggest something like that because I think that would be totally cool. Alright, so all the silver is painted now. And that looks really great. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this flesh color to the jaw and then we'll go on to highlighting the armor. Servitors. If you have any servitors, servitors, servitors in your army, like if you have a tech marine, servitors, 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 then um, this skin recipe is really good for it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on the hi highlights to the armor. Now, uh, some people like to highlight armor with gray, and um, that's that's great. But the reason why I'm not gonna highlight this armor with gray is because the gray is gonna look like just a non-shiny silver. So what I've decided to do is highlight the black with this blue, stick it on scale green. If you want to go with gray, then do the exact same thing, but instead use, where is my Mechanicus, here we go. Instead use Mechanicus Standard Gray. 
So what you're gonna do is you're just going to find all of the edges, the hard edges, and you're just going to paint as smoothly as you can. Now how thick you paint these hard edges is up to you. The most important thing is that they are clean and that they don't look like the paint itself is not thick. You do not want thick paint or else it will leave a, an obvious line across your models as you're painting them. You don't want that paint line. To fix that, just go back over with some black paint. And if you look at the Games Workshop Iron Hands upgrade kit, they also do their highlights in a very like bluish, dark blue color. And the knee pad here. So you wanna be as thorough as you can. Get every single piece of armor anywhere there's a line where the light might reflect. Sorry, this is at this point I'm going to start turning the model at different kinds of angles. Yeah, if you've watched my um, Iron Hands Fluff Hunters video, I mentioned that they're still trying to replace all of the equipment that they lost 10,000 years ago in the, the drop site mass massacre at Istvan 5. So, something you can do is to show that these guys are in ill repair is you could do battle damage, weathering. And um, the way I would do that is with silver paint, like lead belcher, you can make scratches, or like gray paint. It's hard to do scratches on straight black armor. Okay, so that's one leg and one arm. I'm going to actually paint the uh, left glove in silver just to show that I read my fluff and I'm going to um, give him a left bionic hand. I'm just gonna do the fingers actually because the... the the uh, plates on the back of the gloves are like a little bit different so I just want to show that he's got metal fingers so I'm gonna just do the fingers. Um, I'm, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take some lead belcher paint and I'm gonna paint the little, there, there are little, um, I don't know what you'd call them, little plates of armor here and there. I guess they're like access ports. So what I'm gonna do is just to show that these guys tinker with their equipment a lot. I'm going to paint those in silver lead belcher too. You don't have to, uh, it's just a personal thing. So I'm going to leave their main parts of their leg armor in, you know, the black color, but I'm going to be painting any of these small little cutout access ports. and silver. And then one's also on the arm here. And here. Right. It's looking good. OK, 
Okay, keeping keeping on with the keeping on. So we painted the the iron hand, as it were, and all of the little panels on the armor. Oh, another great thing about summer is that I'm getting to catch up with all the videos that I've been missing. That is one of the, the best things I think about summer for me because I, I think I might have mentioned this in another video. My, the Wi-Fi over here at my, my lady friend's house, the uh, internet connection is really, really bad and uh, we can't really do anything like Uploading videos takes forever and watching videos is almost, you know, impossible here. So I have to watch them off of my phone and my phone sometimes is all janky. So unfortunately, that's why I'm, I haven't been watching and commenting a lot. Um, because when I finally do get the moment to sit down and watch a video here on, like, say on my phone, it's just, um, like, I don't have the time. I think I have the time and then it turns out I don't and I have to run and run out and do something else. So summer is great and uh, summer I can actually sit down and paint when I'm not filming and uh, have people's videos playing in the background. So I've been watching a lot of Oasis Rising's latest videos. My good buddy, Ken Leonhart. I'm gonna see if I can catch up on, on everybody's vi videos that I've been missing like Jojo Man. Um, yeah, everybody's videos out there. I, I, I'm not even going to try with, to bother with blue painting though. They've got so much, they put out so much content. Uh, but yeah. Everybody else. Been missing a lot. Andy 2D6, Van Hammer. The list just keeps on going. I love our community. Our community is so awesome. You can tell, okay, when you look at Games Workshop's website and you look at the Iron Hands upgrade kit, you can tell that when they built and painted them, they still had the old color range. I say that because you, it's very obvious after they painted this highlight, this blue highlight, that they washed the entire model with Badab Black. Badab Black just has this, this finish to it. When you wash it over, it ties down dark colors really well. And if you've ever watched or followed my uh, Dark Eldar painting videos, you can see in those videos exactly what I mean. Um, after you paint all the highlights on, which are very you know, very, very bright and obvious when you paint the entire model with Badab Black. It ties in all the colors, it keeps the, the black very strong and prominent and it makes these highlights that you're doing less obvious. Unfortunately, the new Nuln Oil doesn't have the same kind of finish, so when you when you paint it on, it ends up looking different. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So we are just about done with these highlights. is paint the entire thing over with 
melon oil. Before we do that, let's paint his skin. So we're gonna paint the skin with Raeklin Flesh Shade. See how that instantly gives him some color and life. You don't have to, you can keep his skin looking very pale and pallid and deathly, but I find that this is a good this is a good way to start with the skin tone, even if you're gonna do sickly skin. Let that dry for a second. Known oil. So this is gonna go on everything. The metal, the blacks, the armor, tie it all together. The only thing you don't wanna hit, obviously, is the skin. Maybe not so obviously, but yeah, you wanna leave the skin just as you painted it with the Raikland Flesh Shade. But like the bolter, the silver bolter, all of the metallics on the shoulders. And the reason why we did the second is so that we can carefully paint on the painted paint this known oil onto the metal mask. All right. So there you have it. We are going to let this dry and we're going to come back for part two. So stay tuned. Part two is going to be very easy. We're just going to be highlighting up what we've already done, highlighting up the pouches here in the back, adding a couple more um, things to make the model pop a little bit more. But yeah, that's about it. Very, very simple color scheme to start out with and um, hope you guys enjoy this video. Latest player. Zzz.